Amen. The Bible says in Philippians 3.12, not that I've already obtained all this or I've already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus. I ask you to help me to communicate your heart. Let me decrease so you may increase. Lat ek verminder so that I can vermeerder. I ask you to be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give your neighbor a high five, thumbs up, or a wave, and you can be seated. Amen. This morning, I just want to uh, speak a message that I believe the Lord has placed upon my heart, and it's titled, entitled Passion, Purpose, Potential. Somebody say passion, purpose, potential. See, passion is associated with purpose, and purpose determines potential. That's good stuff right there. Passion is associated with purpose, and purpose determines potential. Did you know God has a purpose for your life? Did you know that? And did you know that you can live out that purpose by the grace of God? Uh-huh. You, can, you and I can live out that purpose by the grace of God. And this morning, I want to encourage you and I to live out that purpose that God has for our lives. And I would like to look at three Ps, and then I'll be done. And like I said, we got passion, purpose, and potential. Are you ready? Es yalla geriet. Okay. Come on, let ons begin. Number one, passion. Our passion is associated with our purpose, and our purpose determines our potential. So I want to look at passion. If you're not sure what you're passionate about, you can ask yourself two questions to help find your passion. Did you know that? If you're not for sure what you're passionate about, you can ask yourself two questions to find your passion. And those two questions are, number one, if you could do anything for God and knew you wouldn't fail, what would you do? If you could do anything for God and you knew you wouldn't fail, what would you do? Number two, if you could do anything for God and money didn't stop you, what would you do? Think about it. Okay. Now, the answer to those two questions will usually tell you your passion. And the cool thing about passion is you don't have to get it from someone else. <laughs> When you answered those questions, you didn't have to ask anyone. Come on, somebody. You didn't have to look at someone else's answer. Huh? You didn't have to cheat to get your answer, right? What did you put? Let me put the same thing. It comes from within. It came from within you. So whatever you answered those two questions came from within you. And another cool thing about passion is no one can tell you if you're right or wrong. They can't tell you, oh, that's not right, because they don't know your passion. Oh, this is good. I'm already preaching. Now, another amazing thing about passion is that God is the one who put that passion in you. Are you with me? So whether it be music, skits, drama, children's, business, teaching, acting, media, sound, serving, or whatever your answer was, that came from within you. And the cool thing is God put that in you. God is the one who put that passion in you. Now, here's another amazing thing. Like I said earlier, passion is associated with purpose, and purpose determines potential. What do I mean by passion is associated with purpose? If you look at the answer you gave for the two questions, that will tell you your passion. Now, what passion does, it helps us to find our purpose. And that takes me to my second point, purpose. In case you didn't know, God has a purpose and a plan for our lives. Can I hear an amen? And one way to find out that plan is to find out what we are passionate about. Uh-huh. Once you find out what you're passionate about, it usually lines up with your purpose. Let me say it again. Once we find out what we're passionate about, it usually lines up with our purpose. Whatever you're passionate about usually lines up with your purpose. The challenge for you and I is to go after our passion. 
Uh huh. See, too many times we try to find the purpose in what someone else is doing. I'm already preaching. Too many times we try to find our purpose in what someone else is doing, what, else, what someone else is successful in, or even what someone else said you should be doing. When we allow those things or these things to dictate our purpose, that is when we usually find ourselves being ineffective. I'm just doing it because so-and-so said I should do it. Or I'm just trying to be like so-and-so. No, you got a passion that's unique to you. You got a call that's unique to you. I got a call that's unique to me. Somebody say passion. See, the place that you and I are going to be the most effective is when we are walking in the purpose and the plan that God has for our lives. That is called your power spot. We shouldn't let other people decide our passion. God has placed it in you. I'm going to say it again. We shouldn't let other people decide our passion. God has placed it in you. Now, here's a little illustration about letting people make decisions for us. I found this from a quote, from a quote today in the word. I found it on blueletterbible.com, and it says this. Former president of the United States, Ronald Reagan, once had an aunt who took him to a cobbler for a pair of new shoes. The cobbler asked the young man, young Reagan, do you want square toes or round toes? Unable to decide, Reagan didn't answer, so the cobbler gave him a few days. Several days later, the cobbler saw Reagan on the street and asked him again, what kind of shoes do you want? Reagan still couldn't decide. So the shoemaker replied, well, come by in a couple of days. Your shoes will be ready. When the future president did so, he found one square-toed and one round-toed. This will teach you to never let people make decisions for you, the cobbler said to his indecisive customer. I learned right then and there, Reagan said later, if you don't make your own decisions, someone else will. As a Christian, you and I should have the desire to fulfill God's plan and purpose for our lives. Here's another quote by Billy Sunday. He said, more men fell through lack of purpose than lack of talent. Mm. When you and I don't know the purpose of something then we can use it wrongly. When something is not used for its purpose, that is called abnormal use. Hmm. Example, here's a, a monitor right here, right? It is designed to help me to hear myself on stage. That's what it is designed for, or for the singers to hear themselves when they're singing, right? Now, I could go stand on the monitor and use it as a ladder, I can sit on the monitor, use it as a chair. Are you with me? Uh-huh. I could even use it, I could turn it upside down like this and use it as a table. <laughs> right? But it will not be at its most effective. When I know the purpose of the monitor and use it for the purpose for which it was created... That is when I will get the best out of it. So it is for you and I. When we tap into why God created us, and we're not being used for an abnormal use, but we are being used for what God created us for, that is when we're going to be the most effective. Stop trying to be like Chili Willie. Stop trying to be like Susie Q. Stop trying to be like the movie star. Be who God, I wish I had a little bit of help up in here. Be who God's created you to be. That's when you're always going to be the best. Because if we try to be like someone else, you'll always be second best. Ain't nobody like you. I said, ain't nobody like you. My goodness. So this monitor was created for a reason. And when we use it for what it was created for, that's when it will be the most effective. And so it is with you and I. When we are walking in what God created us to do and gifted us for, that is when we'll be the most effective and at our best. Here's another funny illustration. I think Pastor Ivan will like this. I don't know if he'll like it, but he'll like the topic of it. Here's a funny illustration about knowing the purpose of something. It's a bird illustration. <laughs> 
A rich man was determined to give his mother a birthday present that will outshine all others. Now, we're talking about knowing the purpose of something, okay? So a rich man was designed to give his mother a birthday present that outshined all others. He read of a bird that had a vocabulary of 4,000 words, could speak in numerous languages, and sing three operatic arrayas. Yeah, this is a, a, a good bird. He immediately bought the bird for 100,000 rand and had it delivered to his mother. The next day, he phoned her to see if she had received the bird. What did you think of the birds? He asked. She said it was delicious. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, do you know your purpose? <laughs> <laughs> God has a purpose for our lives. God has anointed you on purpose. God has given us a passion that is associated with our purpose, and that purpose determines our potential. I said that purpose determines our potential. And the last P I want to talk about is potential. Not only has God given us a passion and a purpose, but he has also given us the potential to accomplish that purpose. Oh, this is good. Not only has God given us a passion and a purpose, but he's given us the potential to accomplish that purpose. I would dare say that whatever you're passionate about, you have the gifts and talents to complement that passion. Whatever you answer, what would you do if you knew you wouldn't fail? What would you do for God if you knew money wouldn't stop you? I dare to say whatever your answer is, you probably have the gifts and talents to back up that answer. Mm, mm, mm. I would dare to say whatever you're passionate about, you have the gifts and talents to complement that passion. Not only has God placed a passion in us, but he has also given us the gifts and talents to line up with that passion. So once we find our purpose, I encourage you to go after it with all your heart. Paul says, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Paul knew he got saved for a reason. He got saved for a purpose. And he says, I'm going after all that God saved me for. C.S. Lewis said this, the glory of God. And as our only means to glorifying him, the salvation of human souls is the real business of life. You and I have been gifted for a purpose and make an impact in this world for the honor and glory of Jesus. You and I have been gifted for a purpose and to make an impact in this world that is hurting, looking for answers. Our gifts and talents are not for ourselves, but they are to be used to spread the good news of the gospel and reach hurting people. You have what it takes. I have what it takes to make a difference in this world. I need to get that in someone this morning, even if only one of you catch it. You have what it takes to make a difference in this world. I don't know where you come from. I don't know what you've been told, but I do know this, that God has placed a passion in you. And God has given you and I the ability to accomplish the purpose for which he has for our life. Why would, some wake, why would someone make a speaker and not give it the potential it needs to accomplish the purpose? Why would God call us and not give us the ingredients that we need to accomplish the purpose? I just stopped by to tell somebody this morning that you have what it takes to be a world shaker, history maker, mountain mover, trailblazers for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. Can I get a little bit of help up in here? You have greatness inside of you. You have a world shaker inside of you. You have a history maker. Oh, come on, somebody. Help me out. I know you might even tell yourself, I don't know if I have what it takes, but I just stopped by to encourage us this morning that there is greatness inside of us. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Oh, I wish I had a little bit of help up in here. Praise can change thee. <laughs> hey, you have what it takes. We have what it takes to live out our purpose. We have the gifts, the talents, and the potential, and it's all inside you. Now, here's the amazing thing. God has anointed our ministry 
to reach the inner cities of the world with whatever gift and talent you have. God has anointed our ministry to reach the inner cities of the world and whatever gift and talent you have, he will anoint it. Okay, let me put it like this. God has anointed our ministry to reach the inner cities of the world. And whatever gifts and talents you have will have that anointing on it. I'm going to say it again. God has anointed our ministry to impact the inner cities of the world. Uh-huh. And whatever, whatever gift and talent that we have has that anointing on it. Why? Because you and I are part of that ministry which has a promise. That's why we can speak a message on tithing and people get saved. Come on, somebody. That's why we can speak a message on tithing and people come to the altar. It's nothing that we're doing. It's just the anointing that God's placed upon our ministry. So you can sing a song and not be the best. You can be a rapper. You can be a dancer. I don't know what you got, but you got an anointing upon you to impact the inner cities of the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I might not be the best speaker or preacher or like to get up in front of everybody, but I tell you this, if you walk in the anointing that's been flowing since 1967, you, I uh, wish I had a little bit of help you will make an impact you can go to the street rally grab a microphone begin to testify stutter over your words don't even know if you make sense but people start coming out from their houses people start coming out from the payload post why because you're walking in the anointing of God you're walking in the promise of God I wish I had a little bit of help in here whatever gift and talent that you have has an anointing on it because our ministry has purpose. It's not anything that we're doing, but it's God being faithful to his promises. Not everybody's called to preach. You could be a teacher and leading people to the Lord. You could be a school teacher and impact lives. You could be a doctor, a lawyer, a businessman. Wherever you walk into, you walk in with a treasure out of darkness anointing. You could be riding in the Uber, and all of a sudden he says, you know what? I don't, I don't know. Can I talk to you a little bit? I, I'm, I'm, I'm hurting on the inside. And then you begin to minister to them. Why? Because you're walking in the anointing of God. You can be riding in the taxi, leading people to the Lord. Uh, you, come on, somebody. I, I wish I had some help up in here. You because you've got an anointing upon your life. You've got a gift. You've got a talent. You've got greatness inside of you. God has gifted you and I for a purpose. And God has given us the potential to accomplish the purpose that he has for our lives. You have what it takes. Why? Because passion is associated with purpose. And purpose determines potential. Let me say it again. Passion is associated with purpose. And purpose determines potential. I came for the one this morning that wonders if you have a purpose. I want to encourage you, you have a purpose. The Bible says the Lord knows the plans that he has for us. Plans to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us hope and the future. Not only did I come for the one that's wondering if you have a purpose, I came for the one that feels if you can accomplish that purpose. Do you have what it takes? I come to encourage you and say, yes, we have what it takes. At times, we may not feel like we have what it takes, but I want to encourage us this morning. God will not create you for something and not give you the ability to carry it out. Uh, I know in the past it might have been used for abnormal use, uh, but I dare you to turn it around and begin to use it for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. I know, I know some of you that are called to run a business, you used to run a business <laughs> selling things that you shouldn't have been selling. Come on, somebody. But now you could turn it around. And you keep tr pretty good track of money, too. Uh, you didn't even have to write it down. You know Bob owes me, Susie owes me, Jack owes me. You didn't even have to write it down because it's a gift that you have. Now, imagine if you can turn that around for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ and start running a business for, hey, start running a business for the Lord. I wish I had some help up in here. Come on and stand to your feet and give the Lord a radical praise. Uh, give him a good praise. Uh, give him a grateful praise. I've got, you've got greatness. Uh, 
Clap like you got greatness inside of you. Clap like you're a world shaker. Clap like you're a history maker. Clap like you're a mountain mover. Hey! 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 Tell your neighbor there's greatness inside of me. Hallelujah. University student, there's greatness inside of you. Doctor, lawyer, businessman, preacher, missionary, world shaker, history maker. Mom, come on, get this in your spirit. I want you to clap like you know you got greatness in you. You might be uh, told that you weren't going to amount to nothing. You might be told that I wish I never had you. But God knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. He said, let me create you for such a time as this. We've been called to the kingdom for such a time. Where is the missionaries at? Where is the world shakers at? Where is the mountain movers at? Where is the trailblazers at? I want you to clap like you're one of them. Hey! Hallelujah. Father, we love you, we bless you, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy. I pray, God, that you would help us to go after all that you have for us. I pray, God, that you would give us that desire to fulfill your purpose upon our lives. You've placed a passion in us, God. You've placed a passion in us. Not what so-and-so thinks we should do, not what this person thinks we should do, but you've placed it in us. And you've given us the potential to accomplish that purpose. I pray, Father, that we would go after it with all of our heart. That would help us to be like Paul who says, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. I want you just to lift your hands as we sing this song out to the Lord this morning. I'll sing it out like a mass choir. Hallelujah. I want to do if you're here this morning maybe God has ministered to you I don't know maybe there's one of you you walked in this building feeling like you had no purpose feeling like man why am I even here you came to church this morning saying God I need a touch now if you're already fulfilling your purpose then don't don't come don't come I'm not looking for a lot of people I want the one that says you know what I want to go after what God has for me Maybe you're not even saved and you said, man, if God has a plan for my life, then I want to go after that plan. If that's you, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. You're wondering, man, what do you have for me, Lord? What is my life even about? Do I have a purpose? Maybe you even felt like just giving up. God has a plan for your life. And as we sing this song, I want you to come. I want to pray for you this morning. Come, Father. Come, Son. Come, Daughter. If you're looking for purpose this morning, let's sing it out. Hallelujah. So you come. All things. You make all things new. Yes, you if you're looking for purpose, I want you to come. want to go after all God has for you. All things new Hallelujah. All things new and I will follow you forward. You make all things new. Make all things new as you make Is there anyone else? all things new Anyone else? Just come.
One more. Is there anybody else? came to the altar I want you I want you to lift your hands just lift your hands father in the name of Jesus we thank you for your grace we thank you for your mercy I pray that you would help us to go after all that you have for us thank you for your plan upon our lives oh God. I pray for a fresh anointing upon your people God you place the passion within us God and I pray you help us to pursue that passion because that passion lines up with your purpose upon our lives and you've given us the potential to accomplish that purpose thank you for the world shakers thank you for the history makers thank you for the mountain movers and thank you for the trailblazers in Jesus name amen and amen come on give the Lord a good praise come on give him a good praise hello everybody this is Pastor Drake we hope this message has been a blessing to you and encourages you to grow in your walk with the Lord if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you would like to give to Victory Outreach Church of Cape Town, there's a link in the description. You can go ahead and click that link and it will take you directly to our giving page. I want to encourage you also to follow us on our social media platforms. You can also stop by our website to get more messages at www.vocapetown.net. God bless you.